a fish, a mussel, and a water lily. These three subaquatic robots have been designed to communicate among themselves and send back data to the surface that will help analyze and protect the fragile ecosystem of the Venetian lagoon. How do they work, and to what extent are they able to communicate underwater? It's to answer these questions that scientists have gathered here in the historical Italian city. The murky, turbulent waters of the Venice Lagoon are the perfect playing ground for these underwater robots. They require the development of novel and sophisticated algorithms for navigation, orientation and coordination. Robust and flexible, the robots are designed to talk and listen to each other and develop as a self-organizing underwater swarm using bio-inspired algorithms influenced by nature. In lab environments, we study the behavior of animals, especially social animals. We observe how the animal kingdom is organized. It's not necessarily an organization based on hierarchy. There are animals that communicate among themselves and share information. That is what we call self-organization. So we try to understand this collective behavior and to reproduce it by making models based on mathematical equations. One of the main challenges is to develop a communication system for the robots, as neither Wi-Fi nor GPS work underwater. The scientists have turned to sonar technologies and have gone one step further. We have developed our own technology. For example, here we've equipped this muscle robot with a special sense similar to that developed by certain fish in Africa and South America. It's the so-called electric sense, which enables them to see in troubled waters and recognize their environment. So our robots build up an electric field which they can use to communicate among themselves in the troubled waters of Venice, to sense objects around them and to react to them. The robots can be programmed for long autonomous outings, ranging from a few hours to several months. So the scientists had to come up with innovative solutions to ensure the device's energy harvesting capacities. When they emerge, they can approach a boat or an energy station where they can charge without cables. In that way, we're able to charge the robots without any need to open lids or mechanisms that could cause rusting or water leakage. The robots are equipped with sensors designed to monitor flora and fauna and the impact of industry and tourism on Venice's complex and fragile underwater world. Our robot can, for instance, settle on the seabed. It self-activates when it senses a difference in water pressure triggered by the passage of a boat. The robot is then able to accurately measure the height of the wave caused by the boat. This can be very useful for us to understand the effect that the passage of boats has on underwater ecosystems. And it can help us better manage the situation by establishing speed or traffic limits, for example. A total of 120 devices will eventually make up the Venice experiment, the world's largest autonomous underwater robot swarm to date. <laughs>